Hi everyone, there's a lot going on with Russia and Ukraine, so I thought we'd jump on to answer a few questions and help you get your head around to the basics. Starting with, what just happened? So in March, Russia's President Vladimir Putin officially recognized two breakaway areas in eastern Ukraine. Both of them are in the Donbass region. They call themselves the People's Republics of Luhansk and Donetsk and they have been controlled by pro-Russian separatists since 2014 with Russians backing. Now these so-called People's Republics make up around one-third of the Ukrainian districts of Luhansk and Donetsk and there's what's called a line of control with the separatists on one side and the Ukrainian forces on the other. They have been fighting each other off and on across that line for years even though they are supposed to be a ceasefire. One thing to keep in mind is that the separatists lay claim to all of Luhansk and Donetsk, not just the one-third they control now and Putin confirmed that Russia's recognition of the independence of these so-called people's republics also includes their claim to that extra territory. Now President Putin made another big move. He's ordered Russian soldiers to go into the separatist areas he says they are peacekeepers. We've been speaking to people inside the self-declared Republic of Donetsk. They were describing the Russian military build-up as being like nothing they'd seen before. They described tanks, um, grad missile system. When uh, the journalists speaking uh, to that people, the self-declared Republic of Donetsk, they were describing the Russian military build-up as being like nothing they had seen before. They described tanks, grad missile system. So this is really a big deal because it raises the risk of a direct confrontation between Russia and Ukrainian forces and that could trigger something even bigger and this is happening now so don't forget Russia looks uh, always ready for that one it's been building up troops along Ukraine's border for months the US reckons there are now up to 190,000 soldiers surrounding Ukraine in March on three sides. Everything from, of course, the high-end uh, weapon systems uh, to field hospitals uh, to logistics uh, to command and control. So next question, why did Putin make this move in eastern Ukraine? Well, you can answer that on a few different levels. So in March, the war began. Putin said Russian speakers and Russian citizens living in eastern Ukraine have been under attack all these years by Ukrainian forces and they needed protection. And in March, separatist leaders started evacuating people to Russia. They accused Ukraine of planning a military operation to retake the territories. But Ukraine rejects that accusation. And uh, US, NATO and others think Putin has just uh, been poking up an excuse to start the war. President Putin made a series of outrageous false claims about Ukraine aimed at creating a pretext for war and immediately thereafter announced Russian troops are entering the Donbass. He calls them peacekeepers. This is nonsense. We know what they really are. So why might Putin be willing to consider a war? Well, that takes us to the other thing uh, that has been uh, talking about a lot NATO, the Western military alliance and what he uh, felt at that time is an intolerable threat to Russian security. Putin uh, has basically been uh, telling NATO to get out of his neighborhood. He wants guarantees that it will never admit Ukraine as a member and stop any further expansion to the east. NATO says it will never agree to that, that Ukraine is a sovereign country and that it's not for Russia to decide, even though it's pretty unlikely that Ukraine would join NATO anytime soon. But here's another thing, when Putin announced Russia's recognition of the breakaway areas, he gave a long rambling speech at that time to complete with his own take on uh, history which included the idea that Ukraine is part of ancient Russian lands. He essentially questioned the whole legitimacy of Ukraine as an independent country. Точнее, большевистской, коммунистической России. Украина, по сути, никогда не имела устойчивой традиции своей подлинной государственности. And the director center for Russia, Europe, Asia studies, uh, analyst uh, on Al Jazeera TV, uh, analyzed this speech as... by President Putin, the 65 minute long diatribe. Many analysts have said it's a declaration of war. He's not invading because it's not a sovereign country. That's the so next question. What's the response being well from Ukraine and the West? 
outrage basically at that time. Україна однозначно кваліфікує останні дії Російської Федерації як порушення суверенітету та територіальної цілісності нашої держави. Who in the Lord's name does Putin think gives him the right to declare new so-called countries on territory that belong to his neighbors? This is a flagrant violation of international law. This is the most dangerous moment in European uh, security for a generation. So what they was doing about it? Well, for well, even now, uh, Western countries have been sending uh, weapons and money to Ukraine and they have beefed up troop uh, numbers in nearby NATO countries, uh, places like Poland, Romania and the uh, Baltic states. And now uh, they are hitting Russia with the economic uh, sanctions also, targeting people and organizations connected to the DCNs to recognize the breakaways areas and with links to Russia's military. For example, wealthy individuals, politicians and some banks. Germany has made a big move by suspending the final approval for Nord Stream 2, a major gas pipeline from Russia, which has already been built and Western leaders say they have got even tougher sanctions ready to go, if they need them. A diplomatic editor of Al Jazeera, James Bay, was analyzing that situation. In reserve, in case Putin goes further, because to recognize these two republics, he didn't need more than 150,000 troops, and many fear that there is another stage uh, to My his question. operation. How are Ukrainians feeling about all this? Well, of course, it depends on who you ask and where they live. Some people are scared, but many Ukrainians also seem to be getting on with life as best they can. The journalist Liz Cookman Stated. People are remarkably calm actually and since this whole crisis kicked off they've been incredibly stoic in their response and it kind of runs really counter to the panic that has been splashed across western head headlines. I think there is a kind of level up of panic but I think it's still so unclear about what's going to happen so it's so hard to prepare when you don't know what you're preparing for. At that time was reacting that's the thing with this uh, crisis, it's not new, but it's definitely gone up another notch. Now, if you were hoping uh, for answers to the biggest questions in all this, what does Putin actually want and how far is he willing to go? Well, there's really only one person who can answer that, that's the Putin himself. So this is a small brief uh, description about how Ukraine-Russia war started. So subscribe to another one.